What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for a whole new episode of Black and Crew Compton. This season one, episode four. Um, basically, like, I really didn't get nothing from this episode. And I practically forget most of it. Um, I wish they would put this on at a different time. Because by the time, you know, I know they're trying to get the the views from Black Ink to get to them. But, um... Maybe y'all need to move it to another day. Put it on like Tuesday or whatever so people can actually watch it. I was going to say move it to 7 o'clock, but uh, as I looked at my guide, I see that basketball wise come on at 7 o'clock. So, you know, that's not going to work. But um, at this moment, I don't know if it's because I, I do a couple of re videos in a week or whatever. I mean, in a day. This is the third video that I do in a day. But I don't know. Like, they need to amp it up a little bit. It, it's, it's getting a little stale for me. And, I mean, they had a little drama this week, okay, but, um, I don't know, it's not really, when I'm watching this, I want to love this show, I want to give it a chance, that's why I'm reviewing it, and yes, I will continue to review the season, but it's like, I be in here doing other things at the same time, so, it's like, it really needs, because it's still, it's like it's redundant, that's what it is, it's redundant, okay, we got Voodoo Doll on here once again talking about the fact that, you know, she was in a cult, she talking to Nessie about the whole situation, because she did, um, Nessie was talking about how her mother is going to, you know, come out there to visit, and then her mother sent her a care package, and then she was like, I don't even talk to my mom, but this is what Voodoo Doll is saying to, um, Nessie, and Nessie was like, why you don't talk to your mama, so then she started getting into the whole thing about her mother being in in a cult, how she grew up in a cult, how the stepfather was, the same story that we heard. We already know and can infer that it was some abuse that was going on. And she went into a little bit more detail about how the structure was or whatever. And it's like, please do not bring this shit up again. Please do not bring it up again because we know we get it. We are, you know, here with you. We understand that you went through some trauma. We not downplaying that. It's just that, baby, how many times are you going to put out there that you was in a cult? We get it, okay? Can we move on? You know, um, Tim told KP about the fact that Lemire, I forgot to mention that last week, Lemire was talking cash shit about KP and the way that he was running his shop and how he can run it better and all this stuff. And baby, let me just say, all of that boiled over at the end of the episode. And Lemire, you was dead ass wrong for saying that. Okay, you was dead ass wrong. We just gonna put that out there on the forefront right now. Uh, KP do go out to dinner with his mom, and he was told his mom about the whole thing. And he was like, his mom was like, "You built this shop. This is your dream. You can't have people around you that's giving you that negative energy." And she's one hundred percent correct. Now, if K Lemire lose his job working with KP. At something that is historical for the city, the first tattoo shop, black owned especially, in Compton, you know, and you had the opportunity of being there and working there and you coming there with all this negative energy, that's on you if you get fired, Lemire, okay? I understand that you're going through the stuff that you're going through with your wife, well, your um, baby mama, because that ain't your wife, going through with her and um your girlfriend or whatever, they trying to find new ice cream trucks or whatever, and... It, 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 it's spilling over. The stuff that's going on with the baby, I get it. You're stressed out. And you're taking all of that out on people that did absolutely nothing to you. Because at the end of the day, KP is showing up. You're the one that's not showing up. You talking about some you better than this person, you better than that person or whatever. Baby, and you didn't even show up for your first client on the day after the opening day. Okay? And then, you know, we saw what happened uh, after that. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, I just wanted to get to the part... <laughs> <laughs> the only part that really okay voodoo she shot her shot at barbie barbie said no like right away okay she talking to ink dripping and nasty and she was like girl i ain't used to getting rejected by straight girls like this that quick you know it's just like you know uh my my magic ain't working my voodoo ain't working like what's going on next thing you know you got ink dripping trying to tell her what she needs to say. You got Nessie's like, nah, don't do that. You just got to go up there and go like, mm, and they kissing and stuff. And I was like, what is going on right here? You know, I'm here for it, but what is going on? <laughs> you know, but 
The part that made me laugh and it shouldn't have made me laugh and it wasn't what happened, okay? Because somebody getting injured, somebody getting killed, that is not funny. Let that be clear. Let me be clear. When I say that, I was not laughing at the fact that somebody got injured, somebody possibly lost their life or whatever. I'm laughing at the way KP said I had... A celebrity, my first celebrity client coming up in here tonight, okay? And it's going to be Columbus Shore. I said, not Harrison. Not um, Stump the Yard. <laughs> okay, not Hit Me Baby one more time. Not Britney Spears. <laughs> but uh, just in case y'all didn't know, he's a choreographer. He used to choreograph, choreograph for um, Britney Spears and all that stuff. Okay, yeah, Columbus Shore got titles, okay? He just messed it up with the scandal that happened, what that lost cost him his job on um Scandal. Baby... When he came up in there, he I thought he was playing, okay? The way he came in there, yo, yo, he came in there all brass and all badass, like he yeah, crazy looking, like he finna go jump some home, homie, them motherfuckers took my core, we finna go jump the homies coming around. Uh, I was sitting there like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Why is he looking like this? I said... No, Columbus, what are you on? What are you doing? He was like, yo, this Mexican just got his hair blown out. He just got shot right in front of the shop. Right in front of the shop. It was the way he said it. It was like, are you acting and putting on? It did happen, but he was just so extra with it. And I was with everybody in the shop that said, somebody just got shot outside and y'all gonna go outside. I said, what in the white devil? What, what, what's going on? Uh-uh, we don't run. Our folks, our skin tone, we don't run towards the um problem. We, we, we run away from it. Okay, well, you're doing the complete opposite. KP, you the owner of the shop. Mm, I know you're trying to see if anything going all right or whatever with the shop, but the cops didn't come to talk to you, and they didn't stop directly in front of the shop, so therefore you continue to tattoo, okay? You do your client. Did Columbus ever get the tattoo? Because we never saw him get tattooed, okay? And, um... KP went and talked to this new girl, Elena, and um, <clears throat> tattoo, uh, uh, she 20 years old, giving her a little story. I don't care about her background. The only thing that really puzzled me is, and I already know that I'm not going to like her, and I don't like her as it is, okay? Um, she rubbed me raw already. Um, KP gave, uh, what's her name? Voodoo Doll, a station, gave her a client. I have then realized that Voodoo Doll was an apprentice of KP's, okay? And so he gave her the day after the opening, they had a lot of clients come in. Lemire wasn't there, so they was down an artist. So therefore she was able to get her own client. And she did a really good job at it too. Okay. So far everybody was doing the tattoos that they was doing and no one was complaining about, you know, anything. Of course they're not gonna really show that. But everybody seemed like they was happy with what they got, the end product. Okay. And so you know, me thinking this, I'm thinking like, if you're going to hire somebody new, why don't you just give the position to Voodoo? Okay, because it don't, you don't, you don't, I don't see you being a mentor, um, you know, to this girl, showing her the ropes or whatever, you know, so what, how is she your apprentice at this point? And we later found out that she'd been apprenticing for the past and tattooing for the past year and a half. And then you go and you hire this new girl. But is it because she's a pretty face? She got big boobs and she's, you know, that is that what it is? Because I would rather take somebody who is trying to learn all the techniques and train them and, um, you know, have them and they have a little bit more experience under their belts like voodoo, you know, then I have somebody who was not, did not start off as an apprentice and who only been tattooing for six months, okay? I don't, and you just hired her off the street like that just because you seen some work on Instagram. How do you know? How do you know that that's really her work? Because you can plagiarize work like that. One of them tattoo artists got um called out. Didn't they do that on Black Ink Crew? You know, Chicago. They got called out for um plagiarizing work or whatever. So, um, that can happen. But yet you put Nessie through the ring of trying to say, yo, um, she, cause, cause she got a recommendation from Lemire. Lemire said she'd been tattooing for a minute or whatever. You told her to go through, um, you know, go in there and tattoo him and show him your skills or whatever. But yet you automatically hired this girl. You didn't put her through none of that. You didn't put her through no apprenticeship. You didn't tell her to go tattoo this person and let me see what it looked like. You ain't tell her to draw nothing or whatever. You just hired her right off the spot and you took her word for what it was. And she could have been lying to you. 
I said, uh-uh, that's a strike right there for me, KP, because I really wasn't here for that. I would have gave the bitch a test, okay, because, you know, she she was doing the absolute most. And, you know, some people can say that Voodoo was getting in her feelings and she was doing the most or whatever. No, I felt where Voodoo was coming from. I'm an apprentice, and you see that I'm good enough. I was good enough for you to give me a client of my own. Okay, but yeah, I'm not good enough for you to give me an actual spot here, but you can hire somebody else um, who work you haven't really seen yet in action. But you see my work and you know my work is good enough and my work probably better than hers. Okay, and then you just hire this young chick and she's only 20 years old, 20 years old and only got six months in the game. Baby, you better be extraordinary. That's what you better be. You better be extraordinary out this bitch. Okay, lines better be crisp okay lines better be straight all right Shoop. ain't no crook hold on let me get the magnifying nope it's a hump right there we don't need none of that we don't need none of that circles better be circle okay the circumference better meet bitch okay that's what it better area square perpendicular circumference parallelogram all that shit it better meet girl geometry i couldn't stand that bitch when i was in school but um anyway um yeah, so I felt where she was coming from. And then Nessie get into, oh, baby, that happened. And, you know, Elena Further is going to get on my nerves when she tried to, you know, pull up some stuff from, um, um, uh, what's that girl? Voodoo's past or whatever. That's not right. I don't even care what the circumstances is. That's not right. And then you print it out. You did that shit. You had every intent of trying to embarrass her. And for what? Because she called you out? Okay, because she was questioning stuff, as she should have. I will have too. But at the end of the day, it's KP shop, and he has the right to hire and fire whoever he wants to. That's the only drawback, okay? So can you really get mad at KP? You can get upset at the way that he was running it and the way that he did it. But, you know, at the end of the day, he ultimately has the power to hire and fire. Now, let's just get to the end of this episode. Um, Lemire has a client, you know. And she was waiting there for over an hour. So at this point, KP gave the client to Elena. Not Voodoo, but to Elena, okay? And um, Lemire was late because he was out there looking for more trucks with uh, Danielle. Girl, Danielle is irritating as hell. You can take her off. We don't need her. I mean, she just dead because she loved her girlfriend. But if you can ask one character off, you can ask her off. She is so irritating. You know, the only thing that I care to hear and see her about is to see what's going on with that baby. Because that is a touching and a um, serious subject. And I give them that. But other than that, she is irritating as hell. Um... Can you imagine nagging my ass off, girl? I would have been broke up with her. But, um, so he gets in his feelings when he get in there and they find out that she didn't get, he didn't get a tattoo, um, to somebody else, to Elena, a newbie at, at that. This her first day here. She got a new tattoo and all this stuff. And so you get in your feelings. Lemire, let me tell you this. First of all. I understand the concept of you don't give people um, the uh, another artist or whatever, but your client went to that artist too. She willingly went to her, okay? KP said it was cool at the end of the day. You were late. You didn't give no notice. They called you. This is not the first time that you did this. This is the second time that you did this. So you be upset at yourself because you the one lost out on that opportunity. You over here talking about something. You missing out on money and this is this and that and that. That's on you. Okay. That's one. You know what I'm saying? Nessie, he's a grown man. He can defend himself, okay? He was wrong, all right? But I do understand where you're coming from, giving it to that young girl. But at the end of the day, you have to please the client. And if the client is willing to go to somewhere else to get the product that they came here to get because they already wasted time sitting there so that they time don't get further wasted, if that's what they want to do, that's what they can do. And it's up to the client at this point. You don't need to just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going when these two men are getting into it okay Lemire you was talking all that shit about KP about how he you know uh ain't uh, a leader type and he can't do this and he can't do that but yet you can't call and let people know that you're gonna be late you give yeah, you texting after the fact that you're not gonna be there on the first time you don't let people know the second time that you're going to be late, that is on you and that shows you don't have leadership skills either, okay, to run a business completely either, okay? So, you know, you pot calling the kettle black, you know what I'm saying? Kettle calling the pot black, whatever you know. Y'all you, you, know the saying. Y'all know the saying. And I'm just sitting here like, y'all being hypocrites up in this piece, all right? And, and then, 
when Nessie was trying to defend Lemire for Tim to come out, did she come? Did Tim come at Nessie stuff? Yeah, either Nessie or Voodoo stuff. But either way, I know Nessie was the trying to defend Lemire. And he was like, why are you trying to be all up on him? Why are you defending him like that? Is he your man? You acting like y'all fucking each other. Yeah, y'all fucking, y'all fucking, y'all fucking. And then Nessie got that ass right back. Tim, what exactly do the fuck do you do? You another tear right about now because all we do is see your ass sitting there doing nothing, okay? And he was like, you all up to KP ass. Every time KP get an accomplishment, you over here crying about it, okay? Like you his girlfriend. I know y'all cousins or whatever, but Nessie was like, bitch, you fucking him? I said, good point. Good point. You know, stranger things have happened, okay? So, you know, you gonna act like that? You defend Tim? I mean, um, Tim, you defend KP? Why she can't defend her friend? But, you know, at the same time, she did go a little bit overboard. Uh, Lemire was 100% wrong. KP did what he had to do, okay, to please the claim, you know? And then for Lemire to leave and then to come back and then, you know, to try to snap off and then go at, uh, uh, Tim and y'all finna fight and all that stuff. I'm like, come on, come on. Y'all can't even get the shop over for a couple of days and y'all already about to get into it over some stupidness. Lemire, you was fucking wrong, okay? You should have called. That's why we have phones. That's what it is. Okay, you always call, all right, and you taking your issues out of whatever's going on in your household because of this whole thing with your child. I understand that you 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 going through it, but you can't take that out on everybody else. Ever since you got that news, baby, you've been shitty towards everybody, okay, or at least KP for whatever reason, for whatever reason. But anyway, that's Black Ink Crew. Oh, I gave y'all a significant amount of okay. You know, I didn't think I can do it. But um, Black Ink Crew content, if you understand where I'm coming from, what I was talking about in the beginning, put it down in the comments. Tell me how you feel about it and uh, see if we hear. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, you tell me how you felt about this episode and I will see you guys later. Peace.